Okay, what's going on? 64 to the 5. How, okay, before we jump in, how do you get that? What, what, how do you interpret 64 to the 5 thirds? Yeah, you take 64 to the 5th power, and you take that to the 3rd. To the 1 third power? Okay, I, I'd make a... Re that, that's, that'll work. Anybody have an alternate way of maybe ordering that? If you go 64 to the 5th power, then it just puts you here. Okay. True. Sixty. The, here's that works. Here's here's my one issue with that. Sixty-four to the fifth power is you think really big, right? Okay, so. The first one's a power. I know. I thought it was like a mixed number. That which? Oh, you thought? What do you think it was? A mixed number. Like sixty-four. Oh, oh no. Okay, that's a power. I got you. Yeah, it's yeah. a power. Should have picked it up a little higher, huh? Okay, so. Two things you're getting at here. One of them is that, that you're you're interpreting 64 to the 5 thirds. You're interpreting that as the cube root of 64 to the fifth, right? Does that make sense? Or the other way you could do this is you could say the cube root of 64 to the fifth. They're going to get the same answer, but they're, it's a, they're different. The orders in which you're applying the two powers are different, right? We, both of them are fine. Uh, in general, we could say that some base, a to the power m divided by n, could always be written as what? The nth root of a to the m, or the nth root of a to the m. Right. Important thing being that whenever, and, and we've talked a little bit about this, whenever you have a, a denominator in a rational exponent, the denominator corresponds to a radical, right? Corresponds to a root. Okay. Now there's one little issue here that just is kind of some almost like a number sense thing. Which of these two is easier, Seven. left or right? Seven. This one. No. This one. Yeah, I'd say this one. Right. How come? Yeah, cube root of 64 is a small number. You'd rather take a small number to a power than find the root of a really big number. It's pretty easy to find what something taken to a power is. That's no big deal, right? But finding a, a root is a little tougher. So what is the cube root of 64? Four. Four. Okay. So then four to the fifth. Now there's another shortcut there we could do. Do we have to start from scratch and say 4 times 4 is 16 times Because we could, right? We know that this is the same thing as saying everything in the red circle here is just going to become 4 to the fifth, right? But there's this is kind of, uh, it's kind of good to talk. You probably haven't talked about this stuff in a while. What's a shortcut for me here? Do I have to multiply? Do I have to figure out what? Because we don't know what our perfect fifths are. You know, that's not something we remember, right? Uh, so we'd normally have to say, okay, 4 times 4 is 16, times 4 is 64, times 4 is, what, 56, and keep going, right? So, or did I do that right? Yeah, I think I did. Uh, but there's a little shortcut. Explain to me what this means. Why might that be useful? Because it's actually memorize those two. Well, and by finding out what the cube root of 64 is, you see that you're really just, the cube root of 64 is just 4, right? Another way of saying that is 4 cubed is 64, right? So isn't 4 to the fifth the same thing as 4 cubed times 4 squared, right? So this just becomes, we already know, that 64 is just 4 cubed, right? See what I'm saying? So we could just multiply 64 times 16, or 64 times 4 times 4 to get our answer. So what's that going to be? 256,000... 1,024, yeah. Okay, so 1,024, right? 
Okay? Make sense? All right, so what about this guy? Then how do we interpret that one? Say it again. Okay, so what's the cube root of negative 512? Ne negative 8, right? Okay, so this is going to be, we can think of this as being, I'll write it a different way this time. You, you probably, you spent some time in Algebra 1 talking about this stuff, though, I'm assuming. Okay. So this, it'll, it'll come back. So we could think of this as negative 5 12 to the 1 3rd squared, right? That same thing is cube root of negative 5 12 squared. So that's negative 8 squared. So what's our answer? 64. 64. Okay. Make sense? Okay, let me throw another one up there. What about... Well, we'll get this one in a second. Are there any red flags going off here? The horns are going off. What's going on? Somebody, what's somebody else? What's going on? Okay, what's going on here? Why, why are there red flags going off here? There's no And you can't square it. Uh, okay, we can't square root a negative number, right? So here's where the red flag comes in. The red flag is we've got an even root of a negative. Now we could, but if we're, you know, presumably I didn't I didn't say this, but maybe the implication is we're limiting ourselves to real numbers, right? Now this is not going to be a real number. That makes sense. Okay, because think what this is. This is, there's two ways of writing this. Either this is <clears throat> the square root of negative 256 cubed, or it's negative 256 cubed square rooted. Either way, it's not going to work, is it? We're getting a negative number under the radical. Okay, so this one doesn't work. All right. Uh, what do we do here? Three, just a small curveball there. Jill, what are we going to do there? What if I'm dealing with a fraction? Tell me, tell me some things I got to be a little careful of here. Where's the negative go? Outside. Outside. Good. Is the, the negative is is not included in the power, is it? Everybody see that? It's it, it's out in front of the quantity that's being taken to the power, right? And, and this is this is one of my, I mean, this is, I, I think I've probably said this already a hundred times in here. The most common mistake you can make almost on a calculator is mistakenly, if I enter this in a calculator, what's the answer going to be? Negative 100. And the calculator is right. Because we're really not taking negative 10 squared negative 10 to the second power, what we're really doing is we're taking 10 squared times negative 1, right? What would I need to do to get the answer to be 100? Yeah, I'd need to put that in parentheses so I know that every that this whole number, including the, the coefficient of negative 1, is being taken to the power of 2, right? So yeah, so the negative is going to stay out front. Good. What about the fractional part? What do we do when we take a fraction to a power? Luke, what happens when we take a fraction to a power? So, so what, what, let, me, let me just, uh, bad question probably. Think about this. What if I were doing 2 thirds squared? How would you do that? You square the 2. Do I square the 3? You just square the both. I square both, right? Remember, I've got a rule here. If I have either a quotient or a product to a power, I can distribute the power to both parts, right? So this is equivalent to just 2 squared divided by 3 squared. By the same token, Emma, what if I were to take the square root of 4 ninths? Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I can I can separate the two, can I? I can separate it into the square root of four over the square root of nine, so I get two thirds. Right. Or I mean, you could just say, okay, well, think of four ninths as a number, but we're not very good at that, right? We're not very good at thinking of of, of squares of fractions. It's easier just to break it into top and bottom separately, right? Okay, so all that being true. then I've got this negative out front, and then I'm just going to split this into 729 to the 5, 6 divided by 64 to the 5, 6, right? Kylo, what's 64 to the 5, 6? Or better yet, how are you going to do it? You can organize our thinking. I'll let somebody else do that. To crunch the numbers. You give us a strategy. 64 to the 5, 6. Okay, so which, which part am I going to do first? The, the 1, 6 or the, or, the, or the 5? What do you think? 1, 6. Yeah, so this is going to become, on the bottom... We're going to get 64 to the 1 6. That's just a 6 through to 64. What is that? 2. two. To the 5th. So 2 to the 5th must be what? 34. No. 32. Yeah, 32. What's another tricky way of thinking about that? Yeah, think about that. What is going to be, what is 2 to the... <coughs> I want to say this here. What is 2 to the, what's 2 to the 6th divided by 2 to the 5th? 2, right? See what I'm saying? What's 2 to the 5th divided by 2? It would be 1 half, wouldn't it? Right? So really, if I, if I know that 64 to the 6th is, or 2 to the 6th is 64, 2 to the 5th must be, I must have multiplied by 2 one fewer times, which is equivalent to dividing by 2, right? Dividing by whatever the base is. So on the bottom, we're getting 32. How about the top? 729 to the 1 6. What in the world is that going to be? Yeah, if you get if you get a think about, I mean, that's there's a pretty big difference there, isn't there? Two to the sixth is sixty-four. Three to the sixth is seven twenty-nine. I mean, when you get big powers like that, even an incremental change of just one is going to change the ultimate outcome by quite a bit, isn't it? Right. Uh, so yeah, that's three. How could you think about what's you know just number sense thing again? How could you figure out that that's three? Is nine cubed. Right. And 9 cubed is the same thing as 3 squared cubed, which is 3 to the 6th, right? Okay. So then we get 729 is 3 to the 6th. So 3 to the 5th, what's that going to be? How can I get it quickly? Divide by 3, right? It's 1. It's This is 3 times 6. We want 3 times 5. So I'll just divide that by 3. What do we get? Uh, what do we get? 243. 243, okay. 243 over 32. Okay. Uh, how about this one? Got another little, little zinger for you here. Could I possibly reduce that fraction? You're right. How come, though? Somebody defend why we couldn't possibly reduce that fraction. You already tried it. Okay, think what this is. This is equal to, maybe this will help. I know this stuff just seems, I mean, I just want you to think about just the number. Sometimes we get, you know, we do a lot of algebra, but let's just think about, you know, just about the number sense part of all this stuff a little bit. So 243, we already found out that's just 3 to the 5th, right? 
and 32 is 2 to the fifth. So negative 3 to the fifth over 2 to the fifth. Can that possibly reduce? Well, no, it can't. Because the top is made completely of threes, right? The only factor in the top is three. The only factor in the bottom is two. Can I reduce three over two? So I can't reduce a power of three over two, right? Okay. All right. What about, let's throw a variable in the mix. How about, what if we do something like, Okay, write this okay, write this as a radical expression. Okay, try that. Write that as a as a radical expression. <laughs> In terms of positive exponents, yeah. I mean, I mean, but I want you just to write it using a radical. Okay. Just the top one. Then we'll talk about the bottom two. Yeah. Write it using a radical instead of rational exponents. Two are interchangeable. The easier of the two to work with, which one do you think we want to work with algebraically more? Radicals or rational or fractional or rational exponents? What do you think? Rational exponents. Okay, there's, you know, to some degree, there's going to be a little bit of personal preference, but here's the reason I would say we always want it when we're doing it, and we will. We're going to go kind of progress through this a little bit, and we'll start to simplify some more complicated expressions. But think about all the time we spent, which was mostly just review time, but we did go through a bunch of properties of exponents, right? Remember one thing we said at the time, all those properties of exponents we talked about at the start of module, is that 10? No, 9? No, we didn't do 9. Seven, I think. I can't remember where it was. Somewhere in there. We did some we did some properties of exponents, right? Where we simplified some big expressions. All that stuff applies not just for integer exponents, but for fractional exponents also. Right? So all that stuff you already know you can harness and use when you when you think of it in terms of a fractional exponent. So what's this first one gonna be? What do I do with the V? Do I, what about the V? Where's that go? Outside. V isn't V is to the first power. The V just stays V. And what about this guy? Okay. So that's cube root of W squared or a cube root of W quantity squared. Either way. Okay, good. So we could also write it this way. That's a W. Okay. What about the next one? <coughs> Can we do that? A bunch of ways we could do it. We're using decimals like that though. What's a what's a fifth root of 0.125? Actually, you know what? Let me do that a little differently. Let me do let me make that four thirds. make that four thirds. How do I do a cube root of a fraction like that? So it's the fraction uh, uh, change the decimal to a fraction. Ah, what if I change the decimal to a fraction? 
Yeah, what is what is point one two five? Yeah, one eighth. How, how, how could we get one eighth more quick? I mean, we know that's one we ought to just know, but how could we get that just real quick if we wanted to? Okay, true. I mean, there's it's a it's a nice round number, and so there's some things we could see. But let's say it was a harder one. How could I how could I turn this real quick just for review? This is probably even like middle school review here, but how could I turn that into a fraction? Just one hundred twenty five thousand, then reduce it, right? Everybody get that? We don't probably need to do that here, but I could, right? Uh, so it works out to be one eighth to the four thirds, which is the same as one eighth to the one-third, we always want to do the bottom first, right? To the fourth. All right, Mr. Demenu, what is one-eighth to the one-third? What's the cube root of one-eighth? Uh, we, we might need to start applying some properties of exponents here, right? Because I could split this. I've got a fraction to a power, right? So I could rewrite this as one to the one-third divided by eight to the one-third. That's what that whole expression becomes, right? To the fourth. What's one to the kajillions? One. one. It's one to any powers is one, isn't it? Right? So we end up with one on the top. What's eight to the one-third? Two. Two. Ah. So now one-half to the fourth would be what? One sixteenth. One to the fourth over two to the fourth, right? Okay. All right. What about, let's have a look at this guy down here. 32 to the point 0.6. What in the world? Point 0.6. Ah, okay, let's make that a fraction. Yeah, let's make that a fraction. So point 0.6 reduces to 3 fifths, right? So... Now that's more manageable. What's uh, the fifth root of negative 32? Negative 2 cubed? <laughs> so the fifth root of 32 is negative 2 cubed? Negative 8 is our answer. Good. And you can probably start to kind of do those in your head a little bit, right? Okay. Questions so far? Okay. Good, good. All right. Uh, what if I want to write this as a rational exponent? What do you think? What's your thinking on this? Uh, Why does it look confusing to you? It does a little bit. <laughs> well, how come it looks confusing? It does look a little confusing. Something about that looks a little intimidating. Ah, B, C, D, okay, sure. But that's inside a quantity, right? <laughs> That's, that's inside a quantity, and so we don't really, that's just hand. I mean, it could just be an x if you want it to be, right? That's just, it's, it's one, because it's in parentheses, think of it as one entity, right? So we've got hand to the, the what's the sixth root of hand to the fourth? Hand to the four over six, right? So we get hand to the four six. Oh, but hand is actually... B, C, D, right? Okay, are we done? No. no. Well, what else could we do to this? Yeah, we could reduce the fraction, right? So we could write this more simply as B, C, D 
to the two thirds. Now we could distribute that, but that makes it look bigger, not smaller, right? That's not really simplifying, okay? All right, how about... Okay, one more of these, I think we're done with 11 one. How about this? That's a four on top. Sorry, bad four. So what do you think? Jessica, what's your thinking on this? I did like parentheses four over a third. Ah, good. Okay. Once again, I've got a quantity, right? So I've just got hand. I've got hand to the nine thirds, right? Because the three is the index of the radical, so that goes on the bottom. So I get hand to the nine thirds. And hand to the nine thirds, nine thirds is the same as three, isn't it? Right? So what's finally in there? Well, it's a 4 over x. Okay, so could I, because I have a number involved here, could I make this a little simpler? Yes. What could I do, Sam? Uh, you put 4 to the third, which is 64, and then x. There we go. Good. Okay, we got it. No big. All right, so. ramp this up just a little bit. Let's try Okay, think about that one. you can maybe start to get a glimmer here of why it's better to write things in terms of rational exponents instead of radicals. Written as radical, that would look a little bit messy, wouldn't it, right? But using rational exponents, this is no big deal, right? We've done a ton of stuff like this already. The only difference is these are just fractions instead of integers. It's a big deal, right? So what are we going to do with this? What do you think? Elizabeth, what are your thoughts on this one? Any, what might we try first? Multiply the powers? Yeah, okay, we have a power to a power, right? So we could just multiply the powers, good. So we could write this as hand, just 1 16th, to the, what's that going to give us? Uh, so the threes are going to cancel. I'm going to get negative 1 half. Okay, I got a lot easier, right? Okay, now what? Now what about that? Alexi, what happens if I have a, uh, something to a negative exponent. What do I do? If I have a fraction to a negative exponent, do you remember what we do? Flip it. Yeah, good. So we take the reciprocal to the positive. So we end up with positive 16 over 1, which is just 16, to the positive 1 half. So what's our answer? 4. Okay. 
no big deal, right? If we, if we apply all those properties of exponents that we already know, something like this gets pretty simple. Okay, how about, how about something like this? So what about that? What do we think? Lily, what can we do with that? Um, okay, so I've got, that might be helpful. If I write that as a 2 6, then I, I've got like bases here, right? What, what's the property? If I <coughs> multiply like bases, what do I do to the exponents? If I, sub, if I divide like bases, I subtract. subtract. So if I just made this, a 2, 6, once again, dealing with, if, you know, if I write these as radicals, I mean, what would this look like as radicals? It would look a little bit complicated. I'd have the cube root of x times the sixth root of x to the fifth divided by the sixth root of x. Yikes, that looks pretty nasty, right? I mean, it's, well, how would you deal with that? Well, first thing you would do is you make it look like the top one, right? You turn them into fractional exponents. Now it's easy, though, right? This is just equal to x to the 2, 6 plus 5, 6 minus 1, 6, right? That's no big deal. So what's that give us? 7, 6 minus 1, 6 is 1. Just x, right? OK, one more here. And this is, I know this just review today. I'll put an assignment up. It's just a, it'll be a really quick one. Tomorrow we'll kind of creep out of the review and into some newer stuff a little bit. But I wanted to give you just a little shot of review on this. Uh, what about something like this? What if I want to simplify the cube root of two thirds? And, and you might say it's already simplified. And yeah, in calculus, that'd be fine. A lot of times we don't even bother rationalizing denominators. But what if I told you? that I wanted you to rationalize denominators so we can't have any radicals in the denominators. What could we do to this? I run out of time, so I'm going to kind of push this one along a little bit. What if I split this? I'd write it in terms of powers, maybe, right? So I've got 2 to the 1 third divided by 3 to the 1 third. Here's my question to you. How do I get rid of the cube root on the bottom? This. Think what we, we can't cube it because if I cube it, I'm going to change the number. All I can do is multiply by one. What did we do with with square roots? What if I had the square root of two fifths? We wrote that as the square root of two over the square root of five. What did we do to the top and bottom? What did we do? Just we separated them, yeah. How do we get rid of the, how do we rationalize the denominator? Multiply top and bottom by square root of 5, right? Then on the bottom, we get a 5, and on the top, we get a square root of 10. Same kind of thing up here, right? But it's a little bit harder to think about because I don't have to just multiply by the square root or the cube root of 3. I have to multiply by something a little different. Okay, we'll pick up there tomorrow. I'll put the first assignment up. You should be good to go. It's a quick one.